Hello, explainers. Today we're going to talk about the Instrument Landing System, or ILS as it's commonly known. So ILS provides lateral and vertical guidance to your aircraft when you're landing. It's pretty simple. Uh, these systems have been around since the early 1930s. Very reliable, uh, used at most airports around the world. Though not every uh, airport, not every runway has an ILS approach system, uh, they are very, very common. So ILS is often used when weather's a factor, uh, when you're deciding whether or not you're going to be able to uh, make a safe approach to an airport. In the United States, if a pilot can follow ILS down to within about 200 feet AGL of touching down, and they can see the runway, then they can legally land. But if they can't see the runway, that's the decision point where they're going to need to climb back up and try again, or maybe head to a different airport. So at the beginning of an ILS approach, the ILS signals function as a navigation aid. Uh, this aid helps to make sure that the aircraft is lined up correctly with the runway from a longer distance out. Then you could typically see the runway uh, using the naked eye, even in good weather. And so ILS is a very valuable tool to have in your toolbox. When you're flying an X-plane, it's actually very enjoyable to get on that ILS approach and watch the plane uh, do its thing to get lined up with the runway and come in at the perfect glide slope. So to fly an ILS approach, you first need to align your aircraft with the runway using that localizer as your guidance. This is typically done by either radar vectors from ATC or air traffic control or with a procedure turn. So what's a procedure turn, you might ask? Well, that means you're selecting an approach in your X-Plane 530 GPS unit and activating it so that your aircraft will line itself up generally with the runway. In this tutorial, I've used a programmed approach in my GPS to line up with the runway starting at about 20 miles out from the West Yellowstone Airport. I like to start my flight by going to skyvector.com for charts. Now this is not entirely necessary, especially if you're using X-Plane's built-in map, but I do like to have that extra information for just a little extra realism. First, you're going to look at the ILS localizer information published for that airport that you wish to land at answer questions like what frequency is the localizer on, what altitude do you need to be at, and how far out in order to intercept the glide slope, and you need to have all of this information programmed into your nav radio before you actually make the approach. Now if you're using X-Plane's built-in map feature, it will automatically tune into that frequency if you open the map and choose your approach. As long as you're close to the airport, uh, that you're going to land at, it will be listed as an option to select an approach. But make sure it's an ILS approach. Not all runways have the equipment for an ILS approach, remember. So in order to get those navigational charts that we were talking about, you're going to navigate to skyvector.com. Now, I am not currently signed into my account, so you can get this information without actually being logged into Skyvector. But I've got a flight plan that I've filed previously from Ogden, Utah to West Yellowstone. This is the final leg of that trip. And if you look, uh, we've got West Yellowstone located on the map here. There's a dot right in the center of the runway. If we click on that dot, it opens up some location information. We're going to click on the first uh, information, which is the Yellowstone information, West Yellowstone Airport. And you can see there's all kinds of information about the airport. Some pictures, how much fuel is going to cost you, but what we're really interested in today is we're going to scroll, scroll down to the instrument approach procedure charts. Now I know that I'm going to be doing an ILS approach, and so I'm going to be looking for a chart that has ILS in its title. I know that that's runway one because I've flown into this airport before, and I know that runway one is the only runway in West Yellowstone that has this type of approach. Once you go ahead and click on that, it opens up a printable PDF, which then you can start to explore for some of that information. So if we zoom in a little bit, in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the localizer is set to 110.7. Remember, the localizer is a directional radio antenna, and so you need that information to program into your nav um, radio so that your plane can pick up on the signal that that localizer is putting out. If we scroll to the bottom, we've got some more information here that's going to be useful. 
Number one, it tells us what heading we're supposed to be on. So it's 012. That's the heading we need to be on at 6.9 nautical miles. Another piece of information we're going to see on this chart is the altitude we're supposed to be at. And so you can see there's a graphical representation of the glide slope. That glide slope indicates that 6.9 nautical miles out from the runway, we need to be at approximately 9,000 feet. If we're at 9,000 feet, we're going to intercept the glide slope. And if we've set all of our stuff up properly in the autopilot, that's going to start descending automatically for us, get us lined up on the localizer using this radio frequency information, and we will come right into the center line of the runway. So X-Plane has some excellent tools built into its map function as just part of the game. This is not a plug-in. This is actually built into X-Plane. If you click on M on your keyboard, it will open up your map. Once you're in the map, you want to select Flight Path and then choose your approach. We know that our approach is Runway 1, ILS, because that's the only ILS approach at Yellowstone. Once that opens, you can see that there's actually a graphical representation of where we are in relation to the airport. We're about 2,000 feet above ground level, 10 miles out. And this is the glide slope. Once we intercept the glide slope, then we can activate our autopilot, and it will bring us down that glide slope in a very controlled, very precise manner until we get just above the runway. We can disengage our autopilot and do the rest of the landing manually. So you don't have to go to Sky Vector to get those charts. It's simply an extra level of realism for the game. I really enjoy doing that because it gives me a better feel for what the airport looks like and the approach. So that when I'm actually on that approach, I've already prepared myself for that landing. Okay, we're coming into West Yellowstone, Montana, and I've already uh, lined up fairly well on the runway. If you can see our nav uh, equipment up here in the upper right of our, of our uh, console, you can see that I'm lined up pretty well with the localizer, which is indicated by that vertical line, and we are below the glide slope. Remember, at about 7 nautical miles out, we need to be roughly 9,000 feet or lower. Right now we're at 8,600 and some change, and we are heading on a course of 010, which is exactly where we need to be going. Right now I have my autopilot set to heading and altitude, so we're heading in the right direction. As we get closer to that localizer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually switch our autopilot to nav. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. If we look down at our autopilot, we have heading, which we're on currently, and then nav is what we're going to use to actually get lined up on the localizer and the glide slope. We're also going to click on the approach button. Now the approach button is going to dial in to that frequency that we selected earlier, the 110.7, which we know is the localizer for West Yellowstone. If you look at our uh, gauge up to the left, you can see that we're starting to uh, intercept the glide slope as it's coming down slowly. I'm going to head just a little bit to the right so that we can intercept that localizer a little bit better. And as we get that glide slope coming down a little bit closer to horizontal, I'm going to turn on our nav. And as soon as we hit the glide slope, I'm going to turn on approach. I'm going to wait for it for just a second or two longer. And about now, we're going to go ahead and hit the approach. And then I'm going to hit altitude, the altitude hold button again. And you can see that our autopilot now has a GS on it. That means that it, it's going to intercept the glide slope at this point. So again, if you look at our indicator, you can see that the glide slope, we're right on the glide slope and we're coming into the localizer, so that line is going vertical again. Let's go ahead and take a look out our cockpit window. You can see that the plane is lining, it, is lining itself up with the localizer at the airport, bringing us in on the perfect heading. 
I'm going to go ahead and slow us down a little bit. When I land in a Cessna, I typically like to be between 65 and 70 or 75 knots. We'll go ahead and drop our flaps as well. Kill a little bit more of that speed. Now, in the earlier versions of the Cessna, uh, apparently it had a lot more flap than a lot of people use nowadays. I'm not an actual pilot, so I don't know that for sure. But I typically like to land with two notches of flap. If I go three notches of flap, uh, I don't. if I miss the approach, I don't have enough uh, throttle to get myself back up off the runway, it seems. I always have kind of a nasty, take, a nasty touch and go. Now I'm not touching anything. You can see that the plane is keeping itself horizontal and vertical. We're lined up just about perfectly on that runway. If we zoom in a little bit, you can see that we're coming in beautifully. We'll go ahead and follow the approach down. Now. As I discussed before, I usually vector into my approach, which gets me lined up on this flight path probably 20 miles out, probably a little bit further than most pilots would, but I like to give myself plenty of time, especially if there's not mountain ranges or anything around me that would really prevent that. Give myself plenty of time to line up on the runway. Looks like my ground speed is about 72 knots. It is dropping a little bit, so I'm just going to add just a touch of throttle. So now we're at 70 knots and some change. You can see that we're coming in on that runway just perfectly. Again, I do not have my uh, hands on the control yoke. Just mainly focusing on airspeed and flaps. In fact, I should probably add my second notch of flaps. Now since the aircraft is handling trim, it's going to get me leveled out again. Just a second, probably about now, once I clear the trees, I'll typically turn off my autopilot, line myself up just a little bit better, Looks like I'm dropping speed pretty good. A little bit lower than I normally like to be. But still in the ballpark. I'm going to flare a little bit. And bring us down. So not a perfect landing but certainly one that got everybody home okay. So using ILS we were able to line ourselves up with the runway we were able to intercept that glide slope we were able to line up really well with the runway and we've brought our plane down. And so now we can taxi in to the terminal and say hi to everybody and go explore Yellowstone.